Could DeMar DeRozan return to the Toronto Raptors in free agency this summer? The Raptors are one of the few teams that have the money for him. Of course, there's the connection there from before. Of course, it was a disgruntled leaving with an unexpected trade, but I don't have any doubts that Toronto would welcome him back with open arms. But we're going to be talking a little bit more than that in this video. We're going to be talking about the possibility that DeMar does return to Toronto, as well as some of the other possible destinations he could end up, including returning to the San Antonio Spurs, as well as a potential ma move to the Mavs or the Knicks amongst some of the many options that he has this offseason. And we're also going to be talking about what is the value for DeMar DeRozan? He's one of the most unclear valued players going into free agency that is a star or borderline star player in my memory in recent years, simply due to his play style, in my opinion, and the fact that his skill set is so unique in today's game it isn't necessarily what excels in today's game but he's very good at what he does and that makes his value very unclear heading into this year's free agency and so all of that is what we're going to be talking about today's video and so let's move right into it and we're going to start just with a bit of a general discussion about how he's improved as much as he has on the san antonio spurs this is someone who still obviously hasn't really improved his three-point shot to a point where you would like it to be He's still a mid-range god. He's one of the best mid-range shooters I think we've ever seen in NBA history. That's just my take. He's probably one of the best, if not the best, that we currently have in the league. As far as just his ability to knock down mid-range shots, contested, uncontested, from all positions, all angles, fadeaways, you name it. He just knows how to hit that mid-range at such an elite level. Now, his three-point shooting was better this year, but... Again, it, it's not overly relevant. He's shooting about 26% from deep. Where his biggest improvement is, is as a facilitator and a playmaker. So he's no longer just a scorer. He's not putting up that godly scoring numbers like he was in Toronto, where he averaged 27 a season. But he's still putting up over 20 a night. But his assist numbers, that's the jump. He averaged nearly seven assists per game in the, this last season with the San Antonio Spurs. He's transitioned to a true forward now, although he obviously has much better dribbling than a lot of forwards naturally a shooting guard he can attack to the rim very well create space for himself off the dribble for jump shots in the mid-range and to be able to attack the rim and draw fouls he's one of the best in the league at drawing fouls in the mid-range and at the rim and he continues to do that very well but that facilitating ability is just something that he's improved now as he's moved down the positions into a more small forward power forward role for the san antonio spurs team this is someone who's now averaging nearly seven assists per game. His passing ability is such improved, which is absolutely beneficial for his game because his ability to get to the rim off the dribble is so exquisite that when he can get that passing ability going and he can start setting up for teammates and facilitating, kicking out for open threes, duck unders to guys like Jacopolo on the Spurs or whoever the team has at center, is going to be very, very valuable moving forward, especially as he gets a bit older, as he is now almost 32 believe it or not he's now been in the league for 11 seasons i believe and so we're getting to a point where demar Rosen's athleticism is going to start to drop a bit and as much as he is athletic his game is not going to rely on it to an exponential level due to his mid-range shot just being so good and having that extra bit of facilitating now is going to be very beneficial to his game moving forward it's going to help his progression a lot and is going to make him more valuable on this next contract but the fact that he is 32 and has a unique skill set it makes his value very unclear. We're going to talk about that at the end of the video. Let's briefly mention, could DeMar actually return to Toronto? Um, short answer for me, no, I don't think he will. I think it's possible. Don't get me wrong. I think it's definitely a possibility, but I don't think it's something I would expect. Uh, I would expect that the Raptors just genuinely aren't going to have that much of an interest in DeMar DeRozan. The fact of the matter is, is DeMar DeRozan's inability to shoot the three just really hurts and I don't think the Raptors are really looking to bring in another piece that can't shoot the three, given the fact that they don't have a center right now that can shoot the three. And you, you can't play in the NBA nowadays and be successful while having two players on the court who can't shoot the three three pointer, generally speaking. It leaves DeMar DeRozan in the scenario where I don't think the Raptors would be overly interested in him, even if he was interested in a return. He could slot in at the three, OG could move down to the four. If Siakam got traded, if not, well, then you're Siakam at the 4, OG at the 3. The Mars back at the 2 then, but then you have so much talent at the 2 for Toronto. The fit just doesn't really make sense. And so as much as it would be 
super cool for me as a Toronto Raptors fan. DeMar DeRozan being one of my favorite players of all time is due to me being a Raptors fan. It's just not really something I think is going to happen. A more possible scenario could be a potential move to the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks, of course, are going to be looking for a second option alongside Luka Doncic as Chris Fats Porzingis has just continued to prove that he's not the guy personality-wise for the fit with Luka Doncic or on the court as he absolutely just has not been good, especially in this year's playoffs. He's just absolutely flundering as a 7'2", 7'3", big who will not touch the paint with a 10-foot pole because he sits 10 feet behind the paint at the three-point line. That's Chris Stats Porzingis. Um, and he's getting paid big money to do that. He's a he's a floor spacer for massive, massive amounts of money who they traded away multiple first-round picks for. So that's Chris Stats Porzingis. He is going to be moved this summer. And DeMar DeRozan is definitely a possibility to be added to this team, especially if Tim Hardaway Jr. leaves, and they are very much going to need DeRozan's perimeter scoring and creation. I think he adds another good playmaking guard to this team, someone who can score, take some pressure off of Luka Doncic. Both can be on the ball, ISO, facilitate for others. It adds two very dynamic players that can do that type of role for Dallas, which I think is something they desperately need within their starting lineup, because just having Luka and Jalen Brunson to be your dominant ball on-ball guards and create your offense it's just not good enough and luca definitely needs some help at a higher level jalen brunson's fine but they need a starter they need someone at the caliber of demar Derozan that can take some pressure off of Doncic. Doncic doesn't just have to go at it every single time down the floor and try and create something and just hope another option new york knicks the new york knicks are also looking to acquire some more veteran quality some more high caliber talent this summer and DeMar DeRozan could be that guy. Now, the Knicks are most notably add, looking to add a veteran point guard. Tom Thibodeau wants a veteran point guard. He just doesn't want to start Emmanuel quickly. It could be a bringing back of Derrick Rose. It could be Kyle Lowry. It could be Mike Conley. They have been talks about being interested in the John Wall trade. It could be Goran Dragic. There's a lot of options there. But I don't think they'd be opposed to adding DeMar DeRozan either and putting him at their false forward spot in between RJ Barry and Julius Randle at the two and the four. You need to have Julius Randle and DeMar DeRozan as your go-to guys on offense. RJ Barrett has another summer of development. And this team looks even better coming into next year. It gives them two legitimate scoring options now, in my opinion, as far as on-ball guys and Julius Randle and DeRozan with RJ Barrett emerging as third. And then depending on whoever you add at the point guard spot, this is a quality team. Now, again, it's not a team that's pushing for a title, in my opinion. But I think they definitely need that other scoring option because RJ Barrett on his first playoff run, of course, is going to struggle this year. They'll have to wait to see until next year when he, after he has a bit more playoff experience to see how he does. Julius Randle, of course, had very limited playoff experience coming into this as well. And so Julius Randle most likely struggled. And you would hope that they will both be better in their playoff run next year if the Knicks can make it back. But having DeMar DeRozan on the team who has plenty of playoff experience with Toronto Antonio as well would be very valuable and something I think that could definitely help the Knicks and make sense from a fit perspective. The only problem for the Knicks is that they need to add three-point shooting. DeMar DeRozan most certainly does not do that, but it's a good scoring option for them and something that definitely would work if they are willing to look past the lack of three-point shooting. The last option I want to talk about, just to return to the Spurs. Simple as that, just to return to the Spurs. And I think the Spurs will be fairly interested in bringing him back. Again, this is a Greg Popovich-led team. They have a lot of young assets and talent that can still compete right now, even though the timeline of this team's core is probably much younger and much further down the line than DeRozan being on this team. I wouldn't be surprised to see DeRozan be brought back and for them to try to be com competitive. And even if that involves a potential trade involving a couple of their young players and a couple of first round picks or one first round pick who acquired someone on the trade market as well this summer, maybe they try and take a shot on Porzingis, although I don't think that's likely. Maybe they try and acquire someone from the Pacers as they look to a trade, potentially Miles Turner or Sabonis. I talked about a Sabonis trade in my Indiana Pacers video yesterday to the San Antonio Spurs, and I think that definitely makes a lot of sense. And so I think the Spurs are going to look to stay competitive, and a reacquisition or a re-signing of DeMar DeRozan definitely makes sense. It continues to add them 20-plus points a game. It adds their key, keeps their key facilitator on the team. It's the running mate of DeJounte Murray and DeMar DeRozan. It's two score, scores on the team right now. If they can bring back DeRozan and make a trade to try and add a third guy, then this is definitely a team that can be a competitive playoff team. Again, this is not a title contender. This is not a team pushing for the conference finals. But the Coach Pop-led team, they're a team that's going to want to be competitive. And I think bringing back DeMar DeRozan on a deal is going to make sense for them and something they'll be motivated to do depending on the price. 
And that's what we're going to talk about now. The price and the term. Please tell me what you guys think Demar DeRozan is going to get paid. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. Usually, I'm pretty much any player in the league. I can say, yeah, okay, I think he'll get this X amount of money. Roughly. I have no, I have no idea what DeMar DeRozan is going to get. You would think. You would think. This, let's just talk about a stat line last year. And then just think about what he would get. Okay? 21.6 points per game. 6.9 assists. 4.2 rebounds. Shoots 50% from the field. Is not a great defender. But is an okay defender. Can be sometimes a negative. Depending on his effort levels. And how much he has to carry the offense. But not a good 3 point shooter. One of the best at getting to the free throw line in the league. Make it that as you will. And that's a 20 plus point per game scorer who's fairly efficient, but doesn't shoot threes and not great on defense. This is someone who got very well paid on a max deal by the Raptors when he got into extension however many years ago. And this was the deal that was one of the biggest deals in the league at the time, which doesn't look big anymore because then the cap jumped and all hell broke loose as far as salaries go. But now we're at a point where does DeMar DeRozan even get 20 million or does he get 30 million? He might get 15. I, I genuinely, I could genuinely set the range of DeMar DeRozan's salary at 15 to 30 million. I don't know what the league is going to value him at, given his lack of three-point shooting, given his lack of defense, but yet still his ability to be a leader, to facilitate, to be a good scorer. I genuinely think the range for him is 15 to 30 million because I just don't know where his value is. He's such a weird but unique and special player that his value is so hard to predict. The one thing that he has going for him is even though he is 32, he has been one of the most durable players in the league in recent years. He has only played under 70 games in a non-shortened season once. That was his one injury with Toronto. It was when he slipped on the floor on a corner of the court and the bottom right-hand side near the three-point line that was not properly cleaned off by the crew in the stadium. And he ended up slipping, and I believe it was an abdominal tear or something of that, those sorts. Other than that, he has not had a major injury his whole career. And so he is durable. You know he is going to play. He did have another season where he played under 70 games. That was early on in his career. Forget what that injury was. But that's 10 years ago now. Um, so DeMar DeRozan has had one major injury in 10 years. That's DeMar DeRozan for you. He's going to be available for you on the court. He is athletic, but his game does not rely on freakish athleticism. So... He'll probably look for a two- or three-year deal. He'll probably get a three-year deal. But again, the money? Honestly, I, I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Please, if you have any any thoughts on how long he'll sign, on how much he'll sign for, or, of course, where he'll sign, please let me know. But especially the, the dollar sign value, I, I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. I'm very interested in where he'll go this summer and how much he gets paid. It's one of the more intriguing players in free agency this summer, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on DeMar DeRozan free agency. Let me know what you guys think, of course, down below in the comment section. And if you guys want to follow me at any other socials, be sure to do so down below in my link tree. And like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and want more updates through the free, free agency, draft, trades, all of that sort of stuff. I'll also be doing offseason previews for every team throughout the league, as I have been doing so since the draft lottery concluded. And so if that is something you're interested in, then be sure to check those out. With that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.